Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speedy here, and today we're gonna to be talking about eight builds you can dominate with in 7.33. All of these builds either are super favored by the current meta, or are completely new builds that have been buffed as a result of the major, major changes from 7.33. I hope everyone watching has been having such a good time on this patch. I've honestly also been having a blast just trying out so many different builds, having to learn the new maps, the new objectives, where Roche spawns, all these new uh, portals and things like that. It really has been a blast. I think Valve did a great job with this patch. So I just want to say shout out to Valve. And also another quick thing before we get into the builds, I just want to let you guys know that the Gamely website is 50% off right now if, if you use code DOTA733. I'm saying that because over there, I'm covering every build I want to talk about. Yes, I want to do that on YouTube and I will be making plenty of videos here on this YouTube channel covering you know, how to play these new broken builds. And yeah, as I said, a lot of those are going to go on YouTube but I can't cover everything on YouTube. There's just too much to talk about. So a lot of the videos, a lot of the discussions and builds that I want you guys to try are going to be over on the website. I'm gonna be posting over there two videos a day, a lot of videos to check out. And so uh, yeah, go subscribe. All right, getting into the first build, this is the most bland of all eight builds. So bear with me, okay? If you think every build is going to be just as simple as this one, they won't be. A lot of them are going to be much more in depth and complex and have a lot more to do with the changes but I have to start here and start basic. And that is talking about Naga Siren and Phantom Lancer. I'm not gonna combine heroes and any of the others, but I just wanna quickly talk about if you're a carry player, I think these are probably two of the best heroes to pick right now. I'm gonna make a full carry tier list eventually when the meta fleshes out and I begin to you know, see things more clearly. But for now, what I'm seeing in terms of win rates and, and what people are playing and what I've experienced in my games is Naga Siren and PL seem to be somewhat crazy. And here's why. There's a lot of camps on the map. We know this now. There's 12 more camps on the map. So if you're a hero that can take advantage of this and farm all of these camps, you're going to be a better hero now. At least that's what it seems to be the case, right? And it definitely makes a lot of sense. And so why Naga Siren and PL? Well, you could also make the argument for something like uh, Alchemist and Luna. And I actually think Luna is much, much better now. So that's another hero to keep in mind I could have added here. But the reason why I think Alchemist is a little bit worse than Naga and PL, at least in terms of like how he abuses the new camps, is because how the camps are set up. A lot of the camps, the new camps, are set up in a way where you cannot drag them together and you have to farm very defensively to go farm them. That's not a problem for Naga Siren and PL. Maybe it's a problem for Naga Siren in the mid game when she wants to farm forward, but then she can just farm the enemy camps that are on the side of the map. Basically what I'm saying is Naga Siren and Peel shred through neutral camps. Once they hit their first item timing, whether or not that's Diffusal, Manta, whatever, the, you know, whatever you're going, you ruin camps and you have no problem going backwards and taking all of these spread out camps on the map. And so it ends up just jacking your hero up like crazy. A hero like Peel that was very easy to pressure. And I mean, very easy to pressure in the jungle. And now he can just sit next to his ancient and hit the neutral camps. It's like, you can't gank this guy. I mean, you can, but it's hard to gank this guy. You know what I mean? It's really hard to shut him down. And so this very pressurable phantom Lancer, even though he didn't receive major buffs, he got an attack range buff, which actually was quite major. He got 75 attack range, if I'm not mistaken, which is huge. It really allows him to uh, right click heroes from further away and stay safer in the landing stage. So it, it is quite nice. Definitely a big change, actually. But yeah, as I'm saying, they just take advantage of the space. They farm all of these extra camps very quickly. Naga Siren in particular farms way too fast this patch. Like the amount of creeps Naga Siren can kill in this patch is so disgusting and people aren't even that good at it yet. So so I think we're gonna see some devious timings. All right, getting into the second build, we have Chen with Shard and Auras. Chen's major change this patch, well, there was two. So now when Chen dominates a creep, he gets the gold from it. That might not seem like a big deal, but let me put it in perspective for you because I think Chen is going to be one of the best heroes in Dota. When Chen dominates a creep, let's say it's one of the big creeps, which is reasonable in the mid game. It's gonna give you about what, 60 gold? Chen's domination, or his holy persuasion, is a 15 second cooldown. So let's say you're perfect about it. That's an extra 240 GPM. Philosopher's Stone, after its recent nerf, gives 75 GPM and people complain about that. That's all the perspective you need. Yes, you might be thinking, oh, but I have to then keep swapping creeps. Is that really a big deal if you're getting 240 GPM? And you might be saying, oh, but speed, you're not gonna actually get that much GPM because you're gonna be fighting, true. You're not. Let's say it averages to 180 GPM or 160 GPM. That's still insane. On top of that, Shen's shard allows him to dominate ancient creeps. Ancient creeps give a lot of gold. They give a lot of gold. 
And so this 240 GPM number I gave you, which is already insane, is actually much higher. It's much higher because it works on ancients. And so you get crazy item timings, disgusting item timings. Drums is broken. Glimmer Cape is good. Boots of Bearing is extremely good. Solar Crest got buffed, which works very well with Penitence, right? So you can just jack up Hero's attack speed by like 200 on Chen with Solar Crest, Drums, and Penitence. I'm not kidding. It's 200. If you want to go Roche with Chen, it's instant. You tank it with the Ancient Creeps, and it's instant. On top of that, neutral camps are better over time. They get stronger over time. So now these creeps are harder to kill. They scale with time. Their ability scale as the minute goes on. At minute 15, the, every single one of the neutral creeps' abilities get better. Then at minute 30, they get better again. And then if Chen has shard, it upgrades them again. They literally gave these neutral creeps the ability to be upgraded only by Chen. They programmed every creep to be better just with Chen. If that's not telling you that maybe they think you should pick Chen, I don't know what is. So basically, Chen gets items way too fast. It's almost always going to be the top farm support. It's also a hero that wipes through neutral camps. So if the game slows down, you can farm the 8 billion creeps that are on the map, and it certainly benefits Chen. All right, then we're gonna talk about Brewmaster. This is a hero when I was looking at all the heroes, I kind of glossed over it and I feel bad about it now because it might be one of the best heroes in the game. The major change here is that when you primal split, you get the Void Spirit Brewling. So previously you had to buy the shard to get this. Now, when you click your ult, you just get an extra Brewling and he has an ability and it does damage. And it's like, okay, so they just gave you basically a 33% spike on your, on your ult. Now they slightly toned down some of the other Brewlings, but not enough. Not enough, okay? So this hero just does way more. The Void Spear Brutaling also like drags other Brutalings towards people. So it's much easier to close the gap with like, let's say the Fire Brutaling. And then on top of that, what's really crazy now is if you buy your shard and you're having a good game, your, your split will last for 32 seconds. Base split duration is 20. If you buy your shard, which is not expensive, it does two things. It gives your Brulings the ability to cancel Primal Split, so if you're dying, you can run one of them away and cancel it in a safe spot. That used to be tied to the Ags, it's now part of the shard. And it makes your ulti last for 12 extra seconds. 12 seconds! 12! It's almost a 60% increase. Actually, that is like 60%, right? It's insane! <laughs> it just lasts forever. And so here's why it's insane. Let's just say you're having a good game. You buy a Vanguard. This item's crazy, right? So you buy a Vanguard. Item is very, very good right now. Now you buy a Radiance, buffed item. The Radiance works on your, your split. Your split lasts for 32 seconds. If they cannot kill the split, they will die. It's as simple as that. If they cannot kill the split, which a lot of team comps can't, they will die. You cannot survive a 32 second Radiance burn that you cannot kill. That's how it goes. That, that's how it goes. That's all you need to know. So if you can hit these timings, if you can get the Vanguard, then after Vanguard, I recommend going Mana Boots. After Mana Boots, you go Radiance. Yes, you might get the Radiance at like minute 20, but frankly, it doesn't matter. It's just too good of a timing. And yes, you also then want to buy the Shard. But as I said, this timing is insane. Of course, then if you do this, you also want to take the, the corresponding talents. And the corresponding talents are at level 10, you get 10 Brulings damage. That's 40 extra damage per hit. On top of that, at level 20, you get Brulings health. Oh yeah, and then at level 25, Brulings gain the Drunken Brawler passive. So this hero, it can just, it can really just hit some wild, wild timings. And I think you're going to see that in the meta. It just requires a lot of micro now because there's a fourth Bruling, so it's pretty hard. All right, then we have Enchantress. I don't want to get too much into Ench because it's kind of similar to Chen, but basically Enchantress's shard gives you little friends, which lets you send enemy summons at people, which is cool. But now it also, not only does it give you that, it also allows you to dominate two creeps, which is just kind of crazy because Ench creeps are so damn strong, man. So you, for 1400 gold, which you can get from killing that like Tormentor thing or whatever it's called, you can just start sending Ench creeps around the map. And these things are so hard to kill. They do so much damage. They can push out creep waves infinitely. Like having two edge creeps is just crazy. It's just, cr it's crazy, man. And these creeps are, as I said, very, very strong now. So basically Enchantress, she just pushes in waves super, super hard. She can use this shard to um, hit other item timings as well, right? Cause it obviously is gonna increase your GPM when you have two creeps running around. It's obviously good for team fighting as well. You can buff them up by going something like Drum Solar Crest. You can really play around these creeps destroying people. So there's a lot of ways to work around it. And then from there, you just go normal Ench items. Pike, Glimmer Cape, Holy Locket, even though that item got nerfed a bit. You know, you, you just go the standard items after. I, I just think that this hero in particular, if you know what you're doing and you take all the tier ones, is going to put so much map pressure, it's insane. Because if you take the tier ones in the current meta, it's 
very hard for the enemy to play because you can take these portals back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if the enemy doesn't have tier one towers, they can't protect each other. If you have control of the portals, like the portal area, that's going to be the meta. I really believe to a large extent having control of the areas of the portal and taking the tier ones early. I'm giving information that maybe I don't even feel like maybe I should be giving. I don't know. <laughs> this is my take. It's pretty advanced stuff, but like that's uh, that's kind of how I see the game right now. So I think Ench and Chen are just going to abuse the hell out of this and, and they're already good. And then they got buffed and then the creeps got buffed. It's like I think everything just comes together for these heroes, to be honest. Then we have a cool meme build. All right, now we're going to get crazy. This is where some of the builds get crazy. I mean, some of these builds are already crazy. Like Chen is crazy. Brew is crazy. But all right, Bristleback got some crazy changes so basically every time this hero procs its passive it gets a warpath stack which is actually very nice it helps the hero quite a bit when it's just trying to run away and play around the warpath play style also you don't have to buy ags anymore because of the fact that you proc a lot more just from um showing people your back right and that's really really great so what you need to know about bristle is let's say you're playing against a sven and it's late game previously if sven hit you in the back you would proc one quill not bad right certainly not bad However, now, if Sven crits you for, let's say, 700 damage, you will quill three times. I'm not kidding. You will quill three times. I'm literally testing it in the lobby right now, because, like, for a second, I'm like, am I doing this wrong? Do I have the math wrong? Nope. If, if Sven hits you hard, if he crits you with a Daedalus and God Strength active, it will make you proc three times, because the damage threshold is 200 damage. If you took 800 damage, it would still just only proc once. Now, if you take 800, it will proc four times. This is obviously insane. It's a major, major change when you're playing against all types of late game damage, even in the early game, right? So what you need to also understand is that this is probably better than you think, because let's say you get hit for a 300 damage nuke, okay? It's early game. Previously, it would just proc once and then reset. Now you maintain that damage. So if you get hit by a 300 damage nuke, you only need another 100 damage to proc again. So basically, Bristleback quills a lot. And then you buy your shard, which costs less mana now, but that's it. But you buy your shard that makes you proc another two quills. So you proc a lot of quills and you want to itemize around this. How do you itemize around this? Vanguard got buffed, kind of. Vanguard, you should buy a Vanguard. After Vanguard, you want to go Mana Boots just to make sure you have enough mana. Make sure you buy Magic Wand. I also recommend considering Raindrops just to be a little bit tanky and have the mana your hero needs to spam the W. After that, you go Bloodstone. Even though I'm such a big hater of going these Bloodstone builds on Bristleback, it's better than ever now to the point where it's actually just good and you heal just a crazy, crazy amount. Also, what's cool is you can disassemble the Mana Boots and technically disassemble the Vanguard <laughs> into the Bloodstone. So you can have like a crazy, it's like the old Razor build, right? But the Vanguard's just way better on Bristle. So <laughs> you can hit a crazy timing on Bloodstone if you want. You can kind of just keep the Vanguard intact and buy the Bloodstone on top of it. And that kind of is good. But uh, Vanguard actually prevents you from uh, proccing Br Bristleback as much from what I've been told. Apparently damage block makes the Bristleback not as good. That, that's what I was told. Actually, maybe you should disassemble the Vanguard and you shouldn't buy a cloak. Uh, but I, I don't know the exact numbers on that. I'm not going to uh, claim I do right now. But I can tell you, even without knowing all the numbers, this build's crazy. After the Bloodstone, you go Kaya Sanj. The Kaya Sanj amps up all the spell life steal. It gives you a lot of strength, which you want. It gives you status resist, so you truly cannot get chain stunned in this current meta. And then from there, if they buy like Spirit Vessel or whatever, you can just kind of like buy a, a Lotus or Greaves. You know what I mean? It just, just itemized for the game. You can go Heart if you're completely untouchable. And then the Heart, uh, that regen gets amplified by the Sanj, the Kaya Sanj as well. So you can just become like, if you can hit a Kaya Sanj, Bloodstone, Heart Timing, this hero becomes so... And by the way, always buy your shard. Always buy your shard. The shard is very important for this build. But right, let's get into the next build. Then we have Venomancer. Venomancer basically got changed where his ulti is different now. His ulti, you click it on someone, they take initial damage, they take 5% of their health for 5 seconds, so 25% of their health. Then when it expires, it gets put on uh, the people next to them. That's the new ult. That's how you have to understand it. However, his old ult got changed a little bit. It's now the Ags. The Ags, it procs, if someone dispels Venomous Gale, it will proc the ult. Or if they die while affected by Venomous Gale, it will proc the ult. Or if Venom dies, it will proc the ult. <laughs> so basically you proc your old ult if you have an axe, but the old ult is a little bit different. It doesn't do damage per second, kind of. It does max HP damage per second, which it used to do, but it only does that now. So basically it's mostly playing around burning max HP per second, but it won't finish them off. So you obviously need poison sting and venomous scale and so on and so on. But it's kind of a crazy timing because you have this new ult that does max HP per second, and then you have your old ult in your axe that does max HP per second, and then you do all of your other damage. 
And so in the late game, I assure you, if you put your new ult on them and they get hit by the old ult, and then you have a Kai Assange, they will die. It is so much damage, I cannot even explain. Like, the amount of damage Venno does in the late game is so far beyond what you can imagine. It is way too much. It's way, way too much. So here's the general item build I recommend you go. I recommend you lead with an urn. The hero needs a little bit of uh, armor, a little bit of mana regen. It helps you finish people off, which is nice as well. Um, so that's definitely good. Then after that, you want to go Boots, Magic Wand. After that, you go Midas. And the reason why Midas is good, just so you can really get your levels up. If your game is going super, super well, you can potentially go a Vessel. That item got buffed. Now, if you die, you get a charge, which is actually pretty damn good. If you have no charges, which is actually very nice. Uh, it, it certainly makes a difference. So that's definitely good. Urn got a buff, so you can go like Vessel. Vessel also then got buffed. But you can also go items like, uh, you know, Auras. You can go like Mech. You can go, I was going to say Vanguard. That sounds pretty bad, though. You can go Boots to Travel. You can go Drums. You can kind of go whatever your needs, uh, whatever, your, whatever your team needs as well. Like Venno always has that option where you can double down on magic damage, which is kind of the fun way to play right now, or you can go Aura. So do the fun build. All right, then we have Beastmaster Axe, which got buffed in a major, major way. It got super changed. It's still the Drums of Slom, which people started buying at the end of last patch, interestingly enough, but it got majorly changed. So now how the new Drums of Slom works is every time your unit or you auto attack someone, you get a stack of Drums of Slom. This goes up to 20 stacks. When you have one stack, it procs every three seconds and does 90 damage per proc. When you get up to 20 stacks, which is not hard, by the way, it's very, very not hard to get up to this. Do 90 damage every 0.4 seconds. So every 1.2 seconds, you do 270 damage. This 270 damage works on creeps, so you farm with it. It's constantly going, so if you get ganked, it will do damage to the people trying to kill you and heal you because it heals you 25% of the damage it heals, which is certain. It's not a ton, but it's not bad. It's like, let's say you have max stacks. It's every 1.2 seconds, it will heal you for 75. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. But it used to be, if you got stunned or silenced, it would stop. It would stop. And that was terrible. It would just end. <laughs> well, it wouldn't end. It would get paused. But it was it basically ended. Because it would have to restart the going faster. Now that doesn't happen. So if you get chronoed, the Faceless Void will literally die to drums of slum and chrono. This thing is crazy. There are so many creeps on the map. It's insanely good for farming. I honestly think it's broken. I'm going to say it right now. I think it's hyper broken. If you can get to this timing hyper 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 broken it's not hard to play around you don't have to go helm dom and micro it it's very easy to do all of the damage gets amped by wild axe's damage amp as well so it's better than you think also wild axe's cost less mana now this hero is probably really stupid i'm gonna keep it real all right and last hero doom was broken last patch now it's more broken Here's why. Vanguard, broken item. I've said it once, I'll say it again. It's broken. It's cheaper. Okay, this item was good. It's cheaper. Yes, it gives less HP regen, but not by so much, and you get the overall uh, passive earlier. So it's broken. Then you can disassemble Vanguard. New Octarine is cheaper and built from both of the Vanguard components. So what you do is you go Vanguard, then you go Mana Boots, then you go Midas. Mana Boots can be disassembled. Vanguard can be disassembled. Everything from Mana Boots and Vanguard, besides the boots, turns into Octarine Core, meaning you can basically get a 14 minute Octarine Core Minus. I am not kidding. The amount of GPM you can amass on Doom at the current time, if you go this build, is way beyond what you can imagine. This hero farms criminally fast. Yes, you don't get the Aether Lens from the old Octarine, which was nice for blank cast range. Yes, your your E got nerfed in terms of stun, but so did every other stun. So did War Stomp, so it's a little bit harder to chain stun people. But at the end of the day, Doom is a stupid hero. It's going to continue to be a stupid hero for this meta if you understand how to abuse it. And that's going to be all for today's builds. I want to do something special with you guys or something a little bit different. What I want to do is I want to hear what you guys think is broken. So I'm going to make a video of five builds that are in the comments. I'm going to talk about probably five of the most upvoted builds. I'm not going to promise that because you guys seem to like comments that are really stupid, but I'm going to make a video talking about five builds that you guys suggest in the comments down below. I probably should have put this at the beginning of the video because a lot of you guys don't watch to the end, but that means if you're a loyal subscriber and you put a build that has been really working for you, you'll likely be in the next Game Leak video. So I'm excited to do that with you guys. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.